So in the last video in this series, we put together a device which controls audio envelopes with a step sequencer. And I now want to think about how to actually make some music using that device. Um, and the first thing that I want to think about is, well, what's the point of the device? Like, what is it actually going to be good for? How does it compare to a um, step sequencer, which is con triggering samples, for example? Um, so one possibility is to try and create something that sounds a little bit like a drum kit, um, like a drum sampler, um, but using audio um, sample files. Because this um, device is applying envelopes to a sample file, it's not triggering the same point in a file um, every time a beat is triggered. It's just releasing some of that, allowing some of a sample to come through at whatever point in that sample it happens to be. And so, to basically, I've used that um, the device we made in the last video. Um, just um, I've set it up with some sounds just to test out what it sounds like before. Um, going too far with trying to actually construct uh, something musical out of it. I just want to test the sounds that it can create. So what you can see on the screen here is just that device set up with some groove objects going into the inputs. And I've selected some sound files which just very, very roughly might have about the same frequency as particular drums in a drum kit. Um, very, very roughly. Um, I downloaded these sounds from the Free Sound um, website, which is an excellent place to get uh, samples from. So for a kick drum, it's a recording of a um, plane going past. For a snare, the sound of somebody tuning through um, a radio and getting a lot of static. For a tom, actual drumming but somebody beating on I don't know an empty metal canister or something for another tom <laughs> a kid doing some random humming and for some hats somebody rummaging through a cutlery drawer um so I think one of the kind of potentially um, handy things or interesting things about this device, the fact that it's applying envelopes to audio signals is that well, every beat is going to be slightly different to the last one because it's going to be a different point in the sample file but also potentially if the sample itself has got some rhythmic um, qualities to it then it's going to be kind of superimposing one rhythm on top of another um, so that's one use for it and we can see um, roughly what that sounds like in a minute. Um, I've created another instance um, here of the same um, setup. And this time I've um, I've just created some kind of smooth <laughs> um, uh, synth sounds. So in other words, synth sounds that are not... Um, that are, uh, that are not kind of individual notes, but are um, ongoing... Um, like pads. And so another potentially useful um, thing that this device can do, it seems to me, is if you've got a, um, a bunch of pads playing together, then it can pick out a rhythm out of pads which do not have any rhythm in and of themselves. And so just to get a sense of the kinds of sounds that this um, device is capable of making, I'm going to fiddle with this setup for a while. Um, and maybe just kind of give you a few um, clips of the kinds of sounds that it can make. Um, after that, I'm going to think a little bit more about what kinds of adjustments we want, might want to make to this device if we were going to actually try and use it for a, making a longer piece of music. Um, I think in terms of functionality, there's a few things we might want to add, like, for example, a wet-dry mixers to be able to individually control each of the five channels that this device has got um, and we might want to hook it up to Max's central uh, timing system, the transport object. 
But first, just to get a sense of the sounds it's capable of making, I will tinker around for a while and give you a few kind of um, snippets of the sounds that it can make. Thank <laughs> you. 
So that's pretty fun. I mean, those um, sample source sounds were pretty, pretty much the, you know, just a bunch of random things. So, and I'm, the results are quite interesting. So I think that with a bit of effort, um, this device could definitely be used to make some, um, some interesting music. Um, so I'm now just going to think a little bit about well, what would we need to do to this device to make it a bit more useful in a performance. Um, we definitely want a bit more control over it. A preset system, um, as I mentioned before, some wet dry um, controls to be able to adjust the amount of attenuation on different channels separately um, and hooking it up to a transport system. 